This weekend we have three Army Painter Mega Paint sets up for grabs. Get your comments in on any of the Hobby Weekend live blog posts on beastofwar.com for your chance to win. So, hi everybody, it is time to have a look at some of the mechanics of the games. Now, I am joined by Azrael himself, the mighty, the magnificent, and we are going to have a look at some of the mechanics. So, as you can see, we've set up pretty much a turn two scenario, and we've already picked what we're going to do. So, whenever you're playing this game, as how do you begin each turn? Fantastic. Well, I should say, you always have a look at what ruins are on the battlefield first, because they can play a pivotal part on what your units can do. For example, your golem and my carrying lancers, and specifically, excuse me, sorry, my archers can benefit greatly by what you have on the table. The next thing you're going to want to do is to have a look at your command dial. So every unit, for example, these reanimates, are going to have a command dial that goes with them. That's going to give you an action choice on the left and a modifier on the right hand side. The key thing, always matching your colours to make sure your modifier happens with your action. So this is when you're going to choose your marching orders. They come, this game comes with this handy little key. So you've got your marching, shifting, reforming, all your range of attacks. That's all on your action dial, but it will differ from unit to unit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, so to begin the turn, uh, well, I've already, I've kind of cheated. I've already went through all my choices. Have you done yours yet? I've got mine as well. All right. So you have yours done too. So uh, the way we actually do this is off initiative. Then, so we start by saying any ones. I don't have any ones. Any twos. No twos. All right. Uh, twos. I believe I do have one, which is my leader. So this is my Karai Race Stalker, okay. who will be taking a shoot action and gaining plus one armor. Okay. Fantastic. So. Uh, for her shooting stat, if I flip her card the right way around, and all of them the right way around would be very useful for this game, uh, she has a white and a blue on her shooting. So, uh, basically on the stat cards, what you're going to see down the bottom is the one with the little arrow is your shoot stat, and the one with the little crosswords is your melee attack. And who are you going to shoot at? Uh, I'm going to shoot at the reanimates okay, so because I want to soften them up. I've already taken out one of those bases, which we'll get to in a little bit, but let's see if I can do any damage right now. Uh, that'll be a hit and a precision. Okay. Precision makes no difference because we have no upgrades in the units yet. Yeah. So it's just one hit. She does have brittle one. And precise, which actually means you can re-roll your blank. Ah, I will re-roll my blank then. So I will re-roll the blue and hopefully, yes. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's two hits. And the way you actually do damage in this game as if you want to take us through it. Yeah, so essentially, whenever you roll on the dice, the hit symbol is going to work out what your threat is. And for every hit, you're going to do the equivalent amount of threat as damage. Your threat tends to be how many trays you have front facing. And in this case, Carrie has one. But as Justin mentioned, she also has brutal one, which adds an additional threat to her attack. So each one of these two hits is essentially worth two damage. If we compare then a total of four damage, two and two, against our reanimates, they have a defense of one, which essentially means we're going to lose a wound for every one damage dealt, which is four wounds. Yep. four models, which is going to wipe out our back most units first because it's going to be a full tray. Yeah, I'm going pop to the tray pop the tray out. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll this is time to shine. These have been based, so they're a little more fiddly. Yeah. So maybe whenever you're basing these, just keep the basing material back from the Absolutely. Very good tip. Okay, so okay. that will be my two complete. Okay. Uh, now it's on to threes. Any threes? No threes. I have a three. Okay, see it. So, uh, my three is here, which is my regular spearmen. Now, uh, I'm not doing any moves, I'm not doing any attacks. They're going to do this symbol, which is a rally, which lets me get rid of one bane, yep. which is one of these, because you have banes and you have boons. Boons help you, banes hurt you. So I get rid of one of them. But, as my action, I've chosen this symbol here, which actually lets me activate my war crier. So, my war crier says, spend one bane from your unit, uh, to choose one enemy unit at range one to three, that unit receives that bane type. Nice, okay, good So uh, I need the red stick to actually measure. I'm hoping that your leader is within range sure, three. It's gonna be tight. Oh, it, he's it's in. perfect. He's in, just yeah, about. White bands do count as being in, so that's perfect. So basically, I now take this, spend it, and put one onto him. And that is a blight. So what blight does is, uh, again, you have a handy little reference card. So. Spend from an enemy unit when it performs an attack to remove one die from its attack. So putting that onto a leader, very effective. Uh, so that's my three done. Any fours? I do have a four, yeah. I also have a four. Okay, so I'm actually first player turn. Ah, uh, yes, so you get to go first. Yeah, so I actually am now going to respond with the uh, Ardus X Erebus. Um, he is actually just going to move two. I thought you were going to come forward. Um, so I kind of messed this up a little bit. So I've got a movement of two, straight forward as, as a march. So we pop the little notch at the bottom 
always with the arrow going forward, okay? So you'll notice that it slots right beside the side of the figure. And then I have to put it this side, maybe you can see it a little better. Right at the side of the figure. And what we're going to do is move it right up to the last notch at the bottom. And you'll see it slots in right beside and sits in that little, whoops, sits in that little notch. Now, what I did do though, is I gave him an extra defense. So his normal defense of three, for this round only, will be boosted to four. If he takes any more attacks, it'll cost more damage to actually wound him. So for, basically for each threat that you're doing, you have to equal the armor to do one point of final damage. All right, so my four is actually my rune golem. Now, I have been clever here. I have looked at the rune magic that has came up this turn. And as we can see, there are four red. Unstable. Yep, so his movement is however many of those unstable mana are okay. on the table. So he actually gets to move a four. So, uh, as I'm going to pass this to you. Ah. So getting the four template, and you've actually put a charge as your modifier. I have, and is he in? Oh, oh I think he's just gone up a little bit short. Uh, no. See, here's the thing. He's going to touch he's at the corner. Whenever I hit here, perfect. I flip here, and what happens is he comes yep. in. Lovely. And lines up. Like so. It's called squaring up in the rules. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. So, uh, he now gets his attack, which on the charge, well, it doesn't matter about charging really, he gets two red die. So I'll grab the two red die. The other thing is, he has brutal on the, the blue rune. What is it? Yeah, so that is the stable magic. Okay, so, let's see what we get. Uh, awesome. Two hits, so that equals four total, yeah? Exactly right. Okay, I will take this back. We need a better mic system here. <laughs> So, so that's, yeah, that's going to go ahead and wipe out a tray, basically, because yep. we saw them take damage earlier on. Yep. So I will do the one that is on this side. Yep. Makes sense. Just take this away. <laughs> ah, now I just realised the thing. For my race strider, I gave her a card. Oh. There are upgrade cards in this game. Her one is actually for every two surges she gets, she gets an extra hit. I should have been charging her forward to go into melee. Because it's the melee symbol there exactly that you mentioned, so the ranged attacks, no benefit, melee would give her that extra damage. Damn it, I'm learning this game still. <laughs> okay, okay, so that's the fours done. Okay. Fives? I have a five, yeah. Okay, uh, I do not. Okay, so my five's actually my reanimate archers, so I've actually chosen to go with a ranged attack and go with a modifier of a surge, which is going to give me a surge on top of whatever I roll on my dice. The bottom of their card, they do have a red and a blue, and I do think I'm going to take those cavalry out, because they're coming my way. Um, so let's try and soften them up. We are inside the five range, perfect. Worth noting, this little marker here is great for doing your line of sight, because your front arc must be your facing, very important in this game. It's going to be flanking and facing, your maneuvering around opponents is key. Positioning is everything, and that initial attack is so important. So in range, I'm going to roll red, and a blue. Okay, so the accuracy is not going to do anything good for me because you don't have any upgrade units that I can pinpoint, so that's okay. So I basically get one hit because I've got two front facing units. That's going to equate to two threat, two damage. So that's going to do, I think, one. One wound, because if you look here, so the shield is actually saying two, so it needs two threat to do one point of damage. So I take a point of damage, I will drop yep. one of my, my horsemen. Yep. So he goes away. Um, um, no, I, yeah, I actually got a surge on the dice, yep. and I also have the surge for my modifier. The actual card of the reanimate archers has an ability when using a ranged attack for two surge to get the defender to receive a blight token. So I'll pop one on. Thank you. Uh, unfortunate, but I'll live with it. Okay, okay uh, so no more fours. Yeah, that was my five. Oh, five, sorry. Uh, sixes. I got a six. I do not. Okay, great. Well, uh, yeah, this is a bit embarrassing. Um, so I didn't realize you were going to charge quite as far as you did, because I had, uh, on my reanimated skeletons, a three charge, which would have been negated down to a two charge with the modifier of a minus one. But because I'm in combat with you already, because your initiative was before mine, essentially that comes to naught and I don't actually get to charge back. It does mean my upgraded bull pen on banner kind of becomes a bit of a waste, unfortunately. But live and learn. That's, that's one of the nice things about this game, though. It's that trying to outthink your opponent before where they make their moves, that you're always trying to be one step ahead, which is quite cool. Okay, so that was your six. Yeah. Uh, seven? I have a seven. I have a seven. Okay. So your seven goes first? My, my seven goes first. Okay, so I have my carrion lancer. Uh -huh. uh, so I've got a charge of four. I was actually aiming to come up right up the other side of the board. Um, so let's see where I end up. Okay. So here Will we go. you clip? Oh my goodness. Oh, just about. So, 
This is bad, because we're going to get to see not only did I miss my charge, which means I get a panic, but now I'm right in front of Carrie, who we know you just mentioned has that upgraded melee attack, and I now receive a panic for failing to miss a charge. Wonderful! <laughs> That's... Yeah, this hasn't gone well on this this side of the board's okay, this side not not so much. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I have my seven then, yep. which is my, my horseman. Okay. So I will pass the, the mic around to you again. What will you need? Four? Uh, yes, I'm going forward four and it is a charge. So I forward four open. charge. Oh, this is gonna be really this quite tight. Side, but I'm I'm taking the risk. Ah, I'm oh, short. Oh you're coming up short. So they'll go up to there. But hang on. I don't want to be that close to you. So, oh. normally you go the entire way, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I took an upgrade of meter ah. march. So what I can actually do is, I can stop at any point along this movement track. Nice, okay. So I can actually go, hmm, I would like to stop, let's say about here, I think might be useful. Or actually, I might decide to stop here, because then I could maybe wheel into the side of your... your wow, that squeeze, yeah. I think I'll stop there. That's a Hand nice card. handy card. You still gonna take a panic for feeling yep, your I charge? Will, I will yep. Take a panic for feeling the charge. So it'll go here. Oh. And uh, I believe that's turn. Okay. So last thing we're gonna basically do. Pass it back to you. Yep. Yep. So I was first player. Yep. So I'm gonna get the cast the runes. runes. Cast them out. What have we got? Wow. That's good for me. Two stables, gonna be good for the golem. Two blanks, and the one natural, it's not gonna be a great use because I haven't got any trays left to reanimate into, so that's probably not gonna do a huge amount for me. Um, so yeah, let's... Take a moment and actually pick what we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna to have to do this one-handed, which is a bit of a trick. So I think I'll do that with that for her. My golem. Uh, yeah, golem has to do that. Uh, I'll actually just keep them in front of my cards just to make yeah. it easy. Uh, these guys, these guys, these guys. What should these guys do? Oh god. Uh, you know what? No risk. No reward. I have to kind of guess ahead on what Az is going to do right now. And my horseman... Hmm. Let's <laughs> see. Did that with that should work quite nicely and okay i'm ready are you ready i am ready good to go yeah. okay so now the the turn counter has came to me yep. and we're on to turn three yep perfect okay so uh any ones no ones twos no twos uh just double check for myself nope no twos okay. threes uh no threes i have a three okay let's see it so the reason I decided to do this was to get it early in the turn, and I think I'm close enough. So it's a two forward, that's a charge yeah. from Kara. Yeah. And yep, plenty to make it. So it goes up, butts in, and actually you do turn and actually square up into the person. So uh, because of that, she gets an attack of a white and a blue. And... And so where, so where could this come in now? So if you get two surges, you're going to be able to add damage. Yeah, I get an extra hit. And that's on top of her ability that she already has in the card as well. Yeah, which is... Uh, but I don't really have an ability that I want to use. Her ability is to take an ability from someone else and use it. I don't really want to do that right now. Sure. But let's see what I roll. Oh, Two okay. hits anyway. Yeah. So you could so. potentially re-roll if you want, but two hits is not bad. However, Carrion Lancer has three defense. So as you're currently sitting right now, that's not going to be his defense to wound him. It will. Oh, what have you got? She's brutal. <gasps> dun dun dun. So that'll actually be four doing one oh, point of damage. Man. The brutal is crucial for those single tray units, having the brutal taking that thread up to one so it's not two, it's four. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we're gonna run with that? Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. So, so stick a wound on him. Yeah, stick a wound. So the one extra damage over defense just essentially goes to nothing, but exactly. we get one wound through. Exactly. Nice, okay. So that's uh, threes, any fours? Fours, I have a four, yeah? I have a four. Oh, now your first turn, so after you. Yep, so what I've decided to do is my cavalry again. Yep. They're gonna go for a two move, but they're gonna go for a swing. Okay. Ah, I've done this wrong. It's going to come short. It's going to be a one swing. Oh. So I need the one shallow. So the shallow one. Shallow one, that's the tight one. There you go. So I will pop this in where it's meant to go. The good thing with this is, you see the way there's no hand to the turn on the actual dial? It means you can swing either way you want. But this is a charge. So what I'm trying to do is swing around here, and they're just going to come up short to there. So they will take another panic. Okay, that is not what I thought you were going to do, though. That might have messed up what my archers were planning. Oh, what were they planning? <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. 
What was that? That was four? Four, yeah. Any more fours on your side? Uh, nope. Oh, my four then. Uh -huh. So, I am just, reanimates are standing in front of this ruin golem. All their friends around them have just been wiped out. They're going to do a melee attack back at you. Uh, so, two red dice for the reanimates as it's yep. in the bottom of their melee attack. So, currently as it stands, I'm a defensive four. Yeah, I think if I can cause a morale test here, I think that's maybe the best I can do. I doubt I'm going to get through your four defense. Um, oh, you can. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I'm only threat one though, so that is actually only two damage. Um, which is a bit of a disappointment, but that's going to give me one morale, one morale, so I'm going to do a morale test for two. Okay, so I'll draw two cards out here, yeah. and you have to pick equal or less. Yeah, so what's come out here is a one cost and a three cost. So I basically, because I'm using two tokens, one from my command card, and command dial, and one from the dice, this one's essentially out, unfortunately. So we're going to do Rising Panic, which is the unit receives two panic tokens. So next turn, Ooh. I can do a far more severe morale chest. And I think if those guys can keep holding you there, that'll be actually just fine. Okay, it's, it's a requirement of crush, kill, destroy on my part right now. <laughs> uh, so that's the fours out of the way. Fives? Fives? I actually have two fives. I have a five. Okay, so you're first player. It's actually my rune golem, okay. who is doing an attack. And because of this, he <gasps> okay. would have an additional two defense on him. So he actually goes to six for the rest of the turn. Ah, yeah. Oh my goodness, that's pretty crazy. So yeah, there's no way I can hurt him for the rest of this round. But the important thing with those two is, his Brutal runs off that same type of rune. Yep. Oh, so he's actually got Brutal 2. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. So he's a threat 3, I think. On 2 red? On 2 red, yep. So let's see if I can crush somebody. 2 hits would be Oh, dead. yes! 2 hits would be dead, is what we're going to say. So that's 6 damage, which is just going to wipe out the reaction. Yep. Wow, and that's that's using that's using the runes. Whenever you see those two blue stable runes come out, it's time for the rune golem to hit hard. That's but he can also defend really hard as well. Yep. If I really wanted to, and I wanted to go early in the turn and just defend for a turn, if I was up against something nasty, I have an initiative three on him. So I could go really early and get really tough yep. and make sure he's hanging about, but then I'm not attacking. So that's five sixes. Oh, I've actually got two Oh, no, five. you've got two fives, yeah. Um, okay, so... Well, reanimates I don't need to worry about, they've been and gone. Let's do my Carrion Lancer. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> I tried to charge Carrie on a five. I thought that would be quick, but she's clearly a little more nippy. faster than I thought. Um, so Carrie Lance is going to come up short. However, on the plus side, Ardis Erebus is going to charge right in. I mean, it is on a three charge, so I think we're getting in no problem. Uh, yeah, three is one of these, yeah. so it's it's more than enough. You're going to make that. Walk on in, man. So we'll pop in and we'll slide across to... Ah, moving away from the archers. Yeah, move away from the horses, they're scary. Yeah. A little bit. So we're gonna get, because we charged, we're gonna get to attack. Now I do actually have an upgrade I've bought on him, which is precise, which is gonna let me essentially re-roll my dice because it considers having a full rank behind. He's also brutal as well, which means I'm gonna be currently as two threat for each hit, so. This could hurt. This just could. Okay, um, do you know what? I really want to go for out and out damage. I'm not going to worry too much about his ability. So let's go ahead and see if I can add some more damage. Okay, we've got a good mix. So this. Ah, uh, no, I forgot. I have oh, blight. You do indeed. So shall we reroll? Absolutely. So I will drop you down to one die. Oh, okay. You okay to reroll that? Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm happy to do that. So two white becomes one white. Yeah. Normally I would choose which one goes, but in this case it's. This much of a much. Okay, so first roll. Okay, do you know what? I want I want damage. I want dead guys. I want I want the nice double double hit. Okay, oh, a hit. hit for that. So that's a single hit with a threat of two, so that's gonna be two damage. We'll take okay, two so guys out. I will pop two guys out here. Uno and dos. And then I've got a single morale, so I'll do a morale test and hopefully we get one that costs one, not two or three. We don't. So that's essentially gonna to come to naught because I can't afford it. I don't have if there's any panic tokens on them I could spend them, but unfortunately not. Okay, so we're on to sixes. Yeah, um, no, I'm good, I don't have any sixes. I'm on a seven. I'm on a seven too, so you're I, up. I go first, and I thought you would be into me, so I decided to attack. And this is where the initiative order is so <laughs> critical. Yeah, but it, it's that planning ahead. Is he going to come after me, or is he going to wait, or am I going to be going too soon? Yep. That's Absolutely. where the tactics of this game are really going to come from. So I get to attack with a blue and a red, okay. and if I get if I get two, uh, two surges, I will gain a... Uh, Basically, an inspiration. Okay, yeah, cool. But uh, I have that blight token on here. Would you like to get rid of a dice? Do you know what? Yes, let's make you get rid of one. I'll drop a red. Okay. And that goes away. 
So I roll this. Oh, a hit and a precise. So the, yeah, the accuracy unfortunately isn't going to do anything for you here because he's just a single model, so it's not going to benefit you. Um, but the one hit will turn into two threat because yep. you two trays. But for my ability, I chose an additional hit. Nice. Okay. So that becomes four. Perfect. And my out defense is three. It's going to do a wound. Yeah. Right, so that's two rounds we've went through. Yeah. I think that's enough for people to get a raw idea of how this game really plays. Guys, drop your comments below. Tell us what you think of how it plays. Do you like the idea of it? Actually, no, hang on. You have one unit left. Um, you may as well shoot it. I'm not sure if I want to reveal my one unit. I want to see what you were doing. I wanted them to comment and tell me if they want to know what I did because it wasn't very good. <laughs> so All right. I, well, I thought... Justin was going to charge through and I thought I'd be sneaky. The dodgy archers have a two shift. The Ooh. two shift would have let me sneaky, sneaky, sideways, out of the way. And I was hoping I'd go right I'd past. I'd get round the back of the cavalry. That didn't work out like that. You were one, one step ahead a number of times. Yeah. <laughs> Again, this is the thing with this game. It is that reading your opponent's forces as much as your own. It's absolutely. really fun like that. Yeah, love, absolutely love it. I really can't recommend it enough. And the, the learn to play game is fantastic for getting a feel, but the depth of the game and the models that are still being spoiled by Fantasy Flight are gonna add so much variety, which I cannot wait for. Yep. I mean, look, we've got more characters on the way, command units, new, new races are gonna be coming up later in yep. the year. The elves will be mentioned on a few cards so that can see what they're like. Yep. Well, guys, tell you what, drop your comments in below. What do you think of the mechanics? Are you picking it up quick enough at home? We'll move on here. We will see you in the next one. This weekend we have three Army Painter Mega Paint sets up for grabs. Get your comments in on any of the Hobby Weekend live blog posts on beastofwar.com for your chance to win.